the latest stats seem to continue a trend whereby uh, we have more deaths per annum than births. That's right. Uh, the Isle of Man in the second half of the 20th century regularly had more deaths than births. But as we moved into the 21st century from 2001 onwards, um, we had a period of, of 13 or 14 years where births were higher than deaths. Um, but we reverted to deaths exceeding births about five years ago, and that's still the position now. But I guess the big headline, if well, you well, like... Well, the number of deaths is sort of fairly constant, isn't it? But it's quite a fall-off in births. Yes, the number of deaths um, fluctuate, really, since the, uh, the turn of the century and up and down. But um, it's the number of births that are showing the big trend, and that's where the headline is, really, that um, in... 2009 and 2010, we had two years with um, increased numbers of births, so that the no number of births in 2010 was um, 1,023, so uh, over the 1,000 um, children born that year. And um, in 2019, nine years later, we've got just 710 being born, and that's been a steady year-on-year -year decrease over that period. How, how does that compare to our neighbours around the Irish Sea? Um, all four of the component countries of the United Kingdom, so that's England, Scotland, Ireland, Northern Ireland and Wales, um, they all had peaks in their numbers of births around the same time. For us, it was 2010. For some of them, it was 2008 or 2012. But it, it, over there, they had a peak in births. So they've been going down since then, not, not every year. So it's been a, a little more gradual. But they're now down at... Um, their decline has been about 10% uh, for two of them, 13% for one, 15% for another, Scotland the highest there. So, so their decline is less than half of our decline, of 30.6%. So that's quite significant period. then. It, uh, and what are is. the factors? What do, we, what do we take from all these figures? Well, in the Isle of Man, part of this picture is undoubtedly um, the large numbers of 22, 30-year-olds who um, left the island in the period between 2011 and, and 2016. Now, the last census showed this, and there's been much talk about that, that we've lost many of our younger adults. That's a factor. It also appears to be a factor from some research that's been done on the island that um, the, the gaps between births are greater and, and women having their first child at an older age. And, and when you see these sort of trends, you have to remember that... that these are just the aggregate of individual household decisions. You know, that, that it, it, it becomes a trend, but nobody sort of sees themselves as, as operating within a trend. You know, they're making their own decisions, and then you get these outcomes. In the Isle of Man, I think there are um, numerous additional factors involved here. But well, we, we, we hear regularly, don't we, from uh, whether it be a government minister or the chief minister, we have an ageing population. We do. It, back in 2013, the chief minister of the time declared this as being the, the biggest problem that the Isle of Man faced was its ageing population. But it has aged much faster since then than it, than it, it was at that stage. So, Well, every it, year there's more and more yeah. people joining yeah. what is considered yeah. the ageing population. Yeah. I, I've, I've said on Manx Radio more, before... More so than the death rates. Yeah. I've said on Manx Radio before that... Um, the Isle of Man is, is kind of probably the, the fourth oldest country on the planet in terms of the percentage of the population aged over 65. So we're up there with this um, aged population and with our births at the lowest level since 1986. Now, the last time there were this few births, 1986, the population was only 64,000. So it's a much, much smaller country giving that number of births, you know. Now with the population of 84,000 to have just um, 710 births in the year is, is an indication of the extent to which our, the profile of our population is, is um, much older than it was. Just finally, it's a, a, a long-held ambition of the Isle of Man government to grow the population of the Isle of Man, the working population in particular of the uh, Isle of Man. Warning alarm bells, I'm sure, have been sounding for the past decade, but should that now be a klaxon? I think that um, population and demographics is a huge issue for islands, uh, um, islands of our size in particular. Um, 
in terms of the the economy of the island, the future um, pension liabilities of the island, the employment of the island, attracting, um, how can you attract investment in, in, in business investment and enterprise and so on? How can you attract that if you haven't got the workforce there and so on? So the, the population is crucial. It's crucial in economic sense, in social sense. And there's a danger that population decline could become cumulative. Now, in, in many ways, the... Um, the position has held up over these last three years, it, it appears, based purely on the estimates that come out from, from government. They're, they're estimating that population has possibly added a 1,000 people since the census in 2016. It's far from firm because it's based on, on numbers of people registered with doctors and, and there's various reasons why that doesn't always match up. But in terms of the nature of the growth we've had, the population has, has risen by a, a, a 1,000 in, in three to four years, but 900 of that growth has been in over 65s. You know, only 100 of that growth has been in under 65s, and, and they're clearly not 20 somethings coming in to give birth, you know, from, from the figures here. You cannot tackle the population issues in a piecemeal manner. It, it, it's the whole big picture, it's all sorts of things from, from um, pay levels to uh, investment in. Um, entertainment things to do you know at, at the time of uh, the last chief minister was talking of this he thought one of the key issues was that we'd lost some key entertainment places for the 2030 age group and so there's a factor in this it's about the level of um uh, childbirth um incentives if you like you know uh, child benefits and things like that it's, it's about all of those things and and you really do have to look at the big picture so to to rush off now and try to take some activity that would encourage people to have children when you're not dealing with the, the broader picture to this. It, it's a big area and, and, and it needs a really well thought out policy because if you get growth, but it's in the wrong age groups, it's actually not helped at all. You know, it, it, it's uh, maybe adding to one of the sets of problems you've got.